Samsung Galaxy S20 and the S20 Plus. You're trying to decide which one to buy, and I'm going to help you make that decision. But we've got to mention the elephant in the room, the Galaxy S20 Ultra. This is a literal elephant. I say forget about it. Yeah, it's in the mix technically, but it's too expensive, too big, too heavy, too unwieldy. Uh, the battery life drains too quickly, and the camera features are negligible over the S20 and S20 Plus for everyday use. Yes, you have 108 megapixel photography and 100x zoom, but I think that the times that you're really going to be able to benefit from those are so few and far between that you're gonna mostly get the shots that you need out of the S20 and the S20 Plus, whose cameras are basically identical. You can get all the information you want about the Ultra's cameras in my full video review. So now that we're agreed, no Ultra, it's back to the good stuff, the S20 and the S20 Plus. Now these two phones share the same core features. They have truly brilliant displays. They also have Android 10 and Samsung's One UI 2 software running on top. Same processors as well. Since these two phones are so similar, your decision is really gonna come down to the intersection of size, cameras, battery life, 5G, and price. You ready? Let's go. The S20 has a 6.2 inch screen and the Plus has a 6.7 inch screen. Now remember, screen size is measured on the diagonal. On paper, it may not seem like a big difference, but in the hand it actually is. And the S20 Plus is much bigger. So there are some trade-offs with that. With the S20, it's much more portable, it's relatively lighter, easy to use, easy to use one-handed. The trade-off is that you have less screen here. So when you go to watch a video, if I've got both of these phones side by side, I'm going to lean towards the Plus every time just because the screen is larger and it gives me more viewing space. When it comes to typing, I do notice that the keyboard on the S20 is smaller, but I could still type very accurately. If you're the kind of person who misses the days of small phones, then the S20 is undoubtedly the one for you. If you like a larger phone that isn't too ridiculous and you want more of that viewing space and a more ample virtual keyboard, then the S20 Plus is gonna win it for you on this round. Now you might be wondering, what is the difference between these two cameras? Well, this one has a larger module and an extra lens. This one is smaller, but the real secret is, they're almost completely identical. That's right, Samsung has given the S20 and the S20 Plus the exact same cameras on the front and on the back. These are really good cameras too. The one difference is that you have a time of flight sensor on the Plus. Now this is something that's supposed to help make low light photography better, but to be honest, in most of my photos, I didn't even notice. Now these cameras do lack the ability to take 108 megapixel photos that you get on the Ultra, and they also zoom in 30x instead of 100x. This is actually okay because you can still take a 64 megapixel photo and crop into it, which is what the benefit of 108 photography is, and you can still zoom up to 30x. To be honest, when you get up to 100x zoom, the photo is really grainy. You don't really want to use it anyway in the vast majority of instances. I found that I was mostly using 4, 10, and 30x when I took photos. Beyond that, it's just a little meaningless. The bottom line is that all of these Galaxy S20 phones take very beautiful photos. They're bright, they're detailed, they're saturated with color, maybe a little too saturated for some of your tastes. And I think that night mode is really improved. You also have low light photography, which is really beautiful. Some other phones on the market might do a little bit of a better job in specific circumstances, but I think you're always gonna be happy with what you have. got a 4,000 milliamp hour battery on the S20 and a 4,500 milliamp hour battery on the S20 Plus. Now at first I was a little concerned about the battery life for these S20 phones because the Ultra just drained so quickly. It had an extra large screen that also seemed to be extra hungry for battery resources. But that just isn't so with the S20 and the S20 Plus. I've been able on both phones to pick them up in the morning, 6 a.m., and use them all throughout the night. But there is a little bit of a wrinkle because of something called a refresh rate. Now this represents the number of times that your screen refreshes all of the pixels in a second. Default out of the box is 60 hertz, but you can also go into the settings and select 120 hertz. Why do people wanna do this? Because it makes everything that's happening on the screen so much smoother, like scrolling, navigating, and playing games. 
While I do appreciate this setting, especially during gaming, know that using it will sacrifice for your battery life. If that's something that you're okay with and you want to just make sure that you have a charger handy to top up your phone, and by the way, with fast charging, it does top up really quickly, then that's just a decision that you need to make. All of Samsung's Galaxy S20 phones are 5G capable, but I wasn't able to actually test 5G on them and this was incredibly frustrating to me. My review phones were all equipped with 5G capable SIM cards, but I just wasn't in the right place to take advantage of those 5G networks. But I still have some guidance for you. The S20 Plus is compatible with millimeter wave, which is the fastest flavor of 5G. That means that if you're in an area with a 5G network, you're going to be able to get faster speeds than you would on a different phone. The S20, on the other hand, only works with a type of 5G technology called sub-6, and that means that the peak speeds won't be quite as high as millimeter wave. Will all of this matter to you in the real world? Maybe. It depends on where you are and what your network can do. The one exception to this rule is that the Verizon version of the S20 5G will support millimeter wave, but that's not out yet and we don't know when it's going to be. If you don't have 5G in your neighborhood, this entire discussion is a little bit academic, but it is important for future proofing if you're going to hold on to this phone for two or three years down the line, then it might make a difference to you if you have the faster version of 5G or the slower version. The only problem is you don't really know because you can't control it. That's something that your network controls. The S20 is $1,000. The S20 Plus starts at $1,200 for the 128 gigabyte variety. You can also pay more and get 512 gigabytes of storage. The question is, is the larger phone worth at least $200 more? For me, the answer is no. I think that $1,000 is plenty to pay for a premium device, especially one that does essentially the same as the larger model. I have smaller hands, so I care about a smaller phone. I like one that's more portable. Typing doesn't bother me. The only benefit to me for the S20 Plus is that the screen is larger, which makes it a little bit more comfortable when I'm reading an article or watching videos. But if you don't have the two phones side by side, then you'll never know. And I think a 6.2 inch screen is enough. However, Samsung made the S20 Plus for people who do prefer a larger screen and who want to have a bigger phone because there is an audience for this market. At the end of the day, both of these phones are going to bring you high-end features that will compete with all of the other premium phones out there. That said, I do think that the wise shopper will pay attention to discounts and deals throughout the year. I personally wouldn't run out and buy them. I'm not as excited about them as I was when the Galaxy Note 10 phones came out. I would still choose these above the Note 10 for future proofing, especially with 5G capabilities. My suggestion is to wait until the price is right. See if you can find a buy one get one deal or get a really good trade in. I don't know if I recommend going out and buying these phones at full price, but if you do get an S20 or an S20 Plus, you will definitely appreciate all of the power that you get across the board. Make sure that you read my full reviews of both of these phones, subscribe, and also check out my video of the S20 Ultra.